Blog Talk Radio. Hello, 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 everybody. It's your boy, LaChauncey, back at it again with Minister to the World. Hey, we got a young lady coming on today, and I believe, without a shadow of a doubt, she's going to have some powerful words for you all out there listening. Minister to the World. The title pretty much tells you all about the show is I bring people on to do just that minister to the world, whether they do a song or testimony or if somebody just want to come on and do a little sermonette, it doesn't matter. If you got something to say to the people that could change their lives, you definitely welcome to come on to the show. Anybody listening, if you want to call in, 619-924-9777. That number is 619-924-9777. You can definitely call in. And if you've got questions or if you just got something positive to say, you can definitely call in. There's been a lot going on in the world. And sometimes people just don't have the means to go to a church or sometimes they might not even have anybody to talk to. So I I brought this show on because a lot of times people do listen to the radio or podcasts and a lot of times people just sit in the corner and and got the music playing and listen to the podcast or whatever they listen to. And and that listen to this show could be that day that they needed something to or someone to just talk to them and give them some advice or some encouraging words or just let them know that there is a God. He still and will always be everything that we need. All you have to do is just trust and believe in him. And that's what this show is designed for. It's just to minister to the people. Doesn't matter who it is. Doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter. We just want to minister to the world. Everybody can hear something positive or hear the word of God or hear somebody else's testimony because you may be going through the exact same thing that someone else is going through. And if you hear that testimony, that testimony could be what you need to get through what you're going through. Because at some point in time, we all are going through or will go through something in life. And if you're not grounded in God, then you will fall by the wayside. And what I mean by that is you may struggle a little bit. We all going to struggle. But if you don't have God in your life, sometimes it gets a little harder and you got to figure your way out. But if you just got God in your life, even with that hard, you already know that he's going to bring you out. Some way, somehow, he's going to make a way out of no way. He always do. He always have. He always will. Just talking a little bit, giving her time to get on, getting herself together, getting herself ready.
Um, both shows have been guys. This is my first show with a female, so I'm excited about that. And I already know she's going to bring it tonight. She's going to be on her A game. I hope everybody got the ears ready to listen to whatever God has given her to say to you all. Because we definitely need it. We definitely need it. And I believe she had just called in. Hello, caller. Yes, hello. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> doing fine, doing fine. How are you? I'm doing all right. I can't complain. Hey, y'all, we had the infamous Crystal on the phone. <laughs> Crystal, what you been up to yes. today? Well, you know what? I got to say, today has been a great day. Um Staying, trying to stay out of this heat as much as possible, you know. I've been taking care of my daughters today, even my oldest one. She's been under the weather for a few days, but, you know, I'm looking after her. She's doing, getting there, you know. Ah, I hope she get better. I hope she get better. Yeah, she will. This heat ain't yeah. no joke. I work in this heat, and I, it's crucial. It's crucial out there. Yes. Yes, yes, you're right, it is, because, like, I was telling her to be careful, too, because she even had started, um, like, because she suffers with asthma, and she has most of her life. Oh. And, um, for her, when she gets like that, it can even cause her to have, like, fainting spells, too. So, I, so but, yeah, I've been, she's been with me all day. Oh, okay. Hey, tell her, make sure she takes it easy now, take it easy. Exactly. Even though she's 19, going on 20, you know, she's my firstborn. She's still she's still mama's baby, though. <laughs> hey, I ain't telling nobody my age, but when I get sick, I definitely gonna call grandma real quick. Grandma, what I got to do to get the hell now? Hey, I ain't gonna front. I definitely go to grandma real quick. <laughs> it, it, I know. Exactly. <laughs> yes, that's what they do. Both of them. They've been like that their whole life. You know, even still now, they come to me when they don't feel well. And that's going to be for the rest of their lives. They can be 30 years old. And they, I still call on mama. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes, yes. So how has so it been with you all today? It's been good. It's been hot. Extremely yeah. hot. And extremely, extremely hot. But it's been good. Mm. Can't complain. I know that's right. Yes, yes. So Crystal, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, you know what? Uh, I am, I'm here, born and raised in Virginia, um, grown up and raised in Chesapeake. I've been a Norfolk resident now for the last 15 years of my life. Um, and uh, I have uh, three daughters, 20, 19, and 15. Um, and I, for the last 12 years, I've been uh, a, a worker at Christian Broadcasting Network, or you might know it as CBN, and um, I'm one of the prayer representatives for the 700 Club. Uh, and so, yeah, this is my 12th year doing that. I, um, I also have been, for the last six years, a part of um, uh, Living Destiny Church, which is based in Norfolk as well, where I live. And there I do serve in uh, leadership, uh, worship team leadership there. Um, and their and missions and just you know whatever God has for me you know it, things He's called and assigned for me to do that's what I do. Um, and personally, I've always been a person you know that's of the arts. You know those things are I, things that God has gifted me in. So, but yeah, that's just you know a little summary of myself. And you say you have three daughters, twenty, nineteen, and fifteen. Yeah, yeah, my husband and I have three. And no boys? Mm -hmm. No, no sons. <laughs> hey, man, I, I got David Young that I can send to you. <laughs> you can send him and take him half. half. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, well, you know what? That's true because, you know what? There, he is the one son that I, that, that, that I know, God's son, I do have. So, yeah. And then... You know, no one seeing them and him and Sarah since birth, and you know it's been a long time now. God's time is flying; kids are getting big. Oh yeah, they they definitely growing. 
definitely growing. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, um, Crystal, you you know my wife. Of course, yes, yes. That's my sister. How, how you sister. know my wife? How you know my wife? Wow. Well, um, my husband's uh, grandfather, the late uh, uh, Alex G. Neville, he passed back in January of this year. And um, when I met my husband and shortly after our daughter, the 15-year-old, the youngest one, was born, I officially became a member of uh, the Glory Church of Jesus where his grandfather for several years has pastored. And um, your wife's grandmother and her mother were both members of that church. And, you know, Jamila's grandmother, she was like a spiritual mother to me. And she, and I loved her. She always looked out for me and she always taught me and she kept me laughing all the time. And she was, she was like that cut buddy, you know, that you, that you always mm-hmm. cutting up with, you know, cause she had a sense of humor. Every, I don't, I don't know what it was, but it's like, she would always say something or whatever to make you just laugh. I used to love being around her presence and what a mighty woman of God and all that she shared with me and taught me. And she was like a, you know, like a grandmother to me. And so that's how I met your wife through through them and uh pat you know and so we just automatically we instantly just became close from the very beginning like 15 years ago mm-hmm. so it sounds like um my wife may be okay huh <laughs> of course <laughs> sounds like i might have a good wife huh <laughs> Oh, you do. You do. She's definitely, she's definitely cut from good cloth. You know, we, we were like, you know, Jamila and I, we just became just like, I don't know, just like kindred spirits from the beginning, you know. Hey, you, you talking about Jamila, she don't meet no strangers. She no. don't not meet strangers. <laughs> I don't care who she's you know, around, she can definitely have a conversation with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And that's one of the things that I've always admired about her. You know, she, she doesn't. She don't need no strangers. She, she has just such that, that openness to be able to just talk to anyone and be herself, you know. And she's, and I, I just, I've always loved her personality, her sense of humor. You know, been, there, there was always laughter, never a dull moment. And she, she always shows such genuine love and respect for me. You know, and and I and, and I always had that for her, but it's like she just always had that, you know. And I just I just bless God for her. And, you know, I, I'm a firm believer of when God puts covenant assigned people in your life, and she's been that to me. Ah, oh, so yes, y'all. I got a good wife. I got a good wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> But Crystal, tell me, you said that you've been in the radio business for about 12 years now? Well, actually, at CBN, I am, I work in the prayer ministry. I work in their prayer uh, telephone ministry. So whenever um, any viewer watches the 700 Club and when the host, whether it's uh, Dr. Robertson or whether it's Gordon or, or, uh, or Terry Mewson or um, um, Wendy, either one of them that are hosting that day, anytime they tell the viewers to call in for prayer, they'll flash the um, prayer center number across the screen. I'm one of the several representatives that will be on the other end answering those calls for prayer. Okay. So you're a prayer warrior. Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> hey. There's nothing wrong with that. We all need it. We definitely need it. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I got, I got a question for you. Okay. Um, I know you watch a lot of football. Yes. I, I, I ain't quite figure out why. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, the team that you have kind of, I hate to say garbage, what oh they, they, they? No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you did. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I, know, I don't want to say right? garbage. <laughs> you, they okay? No, you didn't. I guess they call they oh, won one championship. They all right, oh, but you know. No, 
Okay. I'm saying okay. It. There's, there's a team with this blue and white called the Dallas Cowboys. I'm telling you, yes, you yes, need to yes. come over. You need to come over. No, 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 no. <laughs> I am team team Eagles for life. And I'm gonna say something. My husband is a is a San Francisco 49ers fan, and in basketball, he's a Lakers fan. We, the two of us, never had the same identical teams that we both share and like. If and and if he can't convert me, nobody can. <laughs> oh my God. We're gonna have to pray on that. We're gonna have to pray on that. <laughs> nah, nah, that a prayer gonna hit the ceiling because I'm not. <laughs> nah, uh, I'm, I'm Eagles Nation all day. You know, Eagle fans are diehard. They are. So you don't mind losing then? That's that's. I, I'm okay, okay. Okay, with well, that. You don't mind. Saying, well, you well well that might that might be true. Some we do lose, but obviously y'all don't mind losing either. Y'all y'all hey, with I don't know. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. oh, oh God. Oh, we don't do that. We got about what? We got about what? Seven more seven more weeks until until preseason starts, I guess. Oh, you you ready for that? Oh, yes I am. Definitely. You ready for football season? Huh, I can't wait. I'm sitting up here asking right you right now. I think you'll be football season. No. Nah. Oh, I get stirred in my spirit. I'm telling you right now. I love <laughs> football season. I can't wait. <laughs> so what y'all going to be, what, yeah. 4 and 16 this year? 5 and what? 5 and... Yeah, I, I tell you what. I tell you what. I tell you what. <laughs> we just going to have to show and prove. That's it. Mm-hmm. We come. We come. And I'm going to say something. We may have only won one championship in history, but it better still, we did it. We we came we came two years in a row making it as far as we did. Uh oh, two years. So, Come on, you know, Eagles. I, mean, I got two years in there. Two years out of fifty. I mean, Amen. You know, Amen. But, well, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so so a lot of people thought we were one and done, but nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but y'all won one championship. I don't. I don't see another one coming. And then and then this last season that just passed, you know, we were very close to, to reaching it again. But then again, what can you say when you have, you know, a lot of your players, we suffer so many injuries though. We really uh, did. I, I mean I knew, it. I knew it. But it's the truth though. It's the truth though. You got your main quarterback with a back fracture and then you've got your backup quarterback he gets injured too, and then you have. I'm saying it was so many people that went down. Seriously, but Christian, you got a hundred people on that team that getting paid to play. It shouldn't be any excuse. Nah, you got to be ready at all times. You sure do got to be ready at all times. But guess what? They all not going to be. All of them might suit up, but all of them don't get to go out on that field either. <laughs> That's true. You got to be ready for your time. You just got to be ready. Yeah, just like just like uh, you know Sam, you know Bradford when when it was time for him to step up when Nick our sec, uh, our backup quarterback got hurt he stepped up and won that one game. I mean he might that's all he did, but he won that one game. He was ready. <laughs> so <laughs> man, and you watch basketball? You not a Lakers fan? No, actually my um I am I am uh, um I, no it's my husband. That's my husband. My team is Boston. I like Boston. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. I do. I, mm. I do like watching Golden State and what they do. They're they're a good team, but my my personal team is is uh Boston though. Okay. Uh, uh. Okay. I I mean, I can live with that. I can live with Boston. I, I can't. You, I mean, Eagles fans are all right. I mean, as long as you ain't no Redskins fans, then I think we're okay. Oh, child, no. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh-uh. But, <sighs> so, Krista, is there anything that you would like the people to know about you before you minister to the world? Hmm. Wow. You know, I think that's the first time anyone is asked me that before, you know, but I will gladly share this. You know, for me, it's simple. You know, I just want my light to shine, like Jesus said in Matthew 5 and verse 8. That's all. I just want people to see the glory of God in my life and the way I live it in front of them. You know, the words I speak, my actions, you know, my my life, my example, 
that's what I want. I want Christ to be seen, you know, and he's, you know, my heart just wants to, just to, just to do what he's called me to do and reach his people for him. You know, that's, that's, that's it, you know, and, and, and involved in doing that, that means my family who I'm in the midst of every day, my coworkers, whether church, my neighbors, whoever. And that's just, that's just pretty much my life right there. I just want to glorify him and all that, all he's gifted me, all he's placed in me to do. I, like doc, the late Dr. Miles Monroe said, and I, I love his teachings when, you know, he was alive and his teachings still live on today. He said, one of the last things he said before he died was, he said, don't be a grave robber. He said, die empty. Don't leave this earth before you have poured out everything that God has placed in you to give and to glorify God in your life with. Okay. Yeah, because he, he was saying that the most uh, uh, expensive place on earth the most expensive place on earth is the graveyard because it's so many people that have lived life and have died and they have died with their gifts. They've died with their talents. They died with those business ideas. They died with those invention ideas. They died with their athletic ability or in their, their, uh, whatever, whatever God called them to do. And I don't want to do that. That's what he meant when he said, don't be a grave robber. And that's just, and when he, when I, when he said that, it's like it struck that, the Spirit of God just struck in me so hard, and that's why, like, now I say forget about being fearful or doubtful uh, or, you know, insecure because if God put it in me, he's also given me the grace to do it. And not just me, but every human being that he created, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So, audience, to everyone that's listening. I'm going to play this song, this song by Charlotte J called While I Wait. And after mm. that song, you're going to hear from Crystal. Crystal, I believe yeah. that there are some people listening to this show that may be going through some things. Yeah. And I believe that you have some words that can encourage them to keep striving, not to give up. Amen. Be somebody yeah. on the show that is listening to the show that may be facing suicide thoughts, mm-hmm. and I believe you have something that you can deliver to them to let them know yeah. that it ain't the way to go. That all they have to do mm-hmm. is just trust and believe in God, and everything Amen. will be all right. So, Krista, after yeah. this song is over, I want you to minister to the world however you mm-hmm. see fit. I will do that. Your prayer. 
All yours. All right. Well, I thank you so much to Brother Chauncey for having me, and I am really, really just thankful for and just humble for this opportunity to just to share tonight. And I thank God for all of you who are listening, all of that are viewing into the show tonight. And I just wanted to just expound on one word and one topic that the Lord gave me uh, for this. Uh, segment and the word is restoration and I thank God because I know that there whoever is listening there is restoration for you there is restoration promised by our God Jesus and there have been some that I know that are listening now life has taken you through it And it seems sometimes you don't even see your end from your beginning. But I thank God because he is the God that restores years. He restores strength. God restores power and might. God restores health. God restores finance. No matter what it is that is needed in your life that you you have lost, God restores. And not only does he do that, he restores even that more than what you lost. And right. somebody may be feeling like giving up tonight, but I hmm. just want to encourage you, take hold of God's word. Take hold of God's hand because he has never let his hand slip from yours. He has never let go. He said he would abide with us and never leave us. And the hmm. Holy Spirit, as the Gospel of John teaches, Jesus said he is the comforter. He is there as your partner. And like in the Greek, the word paraclete means that he comes alongside you. So always mm-hmm. use your partner, the Holy Spirit. He is right there for you. The text that the Lord gave me tonight on this topic of restoration is from, and this is familiar passage, it's from the prophet, the book of Joel, chapter 2. And uh, he is starting with verses uh, 21 through 27. And I won't read through every verse, but the reason he gave me that is because we are familiar with the one uh, verse that says in 25, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Okay? And so this is the prophecy of God. Joel was known as the prophet of Pentecost because, again, his prophecy was even spoken in Acts chapter 2 when Peter was, was preaching on that day of Pentecost. See, we have the promise of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he comes to restore. And let me tell you something. When we're, we, he, he mentioned those creatures that came like a great army. Locusts, they some bad creatures. I'm going to tell you that right now. Some of us have had several locusts that come into our life. And locusts, what they do is they reproduce quickly. They travel great distances. You know, they, they're, they're able to multiply quickly in their lifespan. But, and, and then the caterpillar, the palmer worm, too, it, it mentions as well. It, it mentions the canker worm. Now, the locusts, they eat anything green they see. Those other worms, they just get the leftovers. See, that's what the devil comes to do, 
steal, kill, and destroy, like in John 10 it says. When the enemy comes, he comes strong, and we know this. We know he does. And so when he comes, he comes to devour everything. He comes to take all that he can. And some of you, he may have seemed like he took your last dollar or your, your health. He might have took, tried to take your marriage or your child, or he might even mm. try to take your life. But I'm going to tell you something right now. When God said that he will restore the years, that means that we have a God. Even there's other scripture in the Bible, how in, I think it's Psalm 90, with the writing of Moses, God redeems time. He, mm, he get, see, God adds back to you your years. The things you think you've lost, so what if you're 50? If, he's, if God gave you a business and said to give you the vision and the provision to start it, then do it. See, God is not bound by time. God is the God of eternity. That's the realm that he operates in. God is a God of eternity. So he's not bound by time. To the limitations that we put on ourselves, we think it's God. No, it's you limiting yourself. See, God has already done his part. The Bible says that God has already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So, therefore, it's us that have to get in partnership with God. It's us that have to get in alignment of the word of God. It's us that got to start first believing that what God said, his word, is the final authority. That's what we need to believe, and we need to act, take our faith and put that into action. Take the word of God. First of all, get it down in you. Learn it. Study it. Apply it. And I know a lot of people say, well, that's, say, that's more easier said than done. All you need is a ready-made mind. All you need is the grace and the help of the Holy Spirit in order to get started. Because you know what grace is, seriously, uh, everybody listening? Grace, God meant to be a teaching tool for hmm. learning about who he is, his love for us, and also walking in the obedience. See, the thing is, the relationship that we have with Christ, it should get from a level of this, this was my mother's God or my father's God or my grandparents' God. See, when you walk in full uh, grace and faith, now he becomes real to you. Now you begin to start understanding the heart of the Father, God, that he is. You start understanding his love, and it becomes to be perfected in you. You get to a place where you're now uh, uh, knowing that I serve God because I love him. I get to do it by my own free will, and nobody has to force me to do it. I know that my God loves me. He, we love him because he first loved us, as it says in First John. So I'm telling you right now, the things that I'm sharing with you, these have been experiences that I personally have walked through in my life. I, I've been suicidal, and God gave me people on the prayer line that I work with now to minister to the suicidal. I, have, I prayed with people who called up on my line, and they literally had loaded guns to their head. And by the mm. Holy Spirit, it wasn't crystal. It was the Holy Spirit that ministered through me, and it caused them to just free themselves from that weapon, and it caused them to just really just break down and, and surrender their all to God and start to worship God and start to follow the Lord again. There have been people hmm. that I've spoken to that were uh, telling me they were in their car and they were just about ready to drive their cars into lakes or off cliffs. Hmm. You know, I've, 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 God, has minister, God has used me to minister people that suffered mental health issues. I went through clinical depression. I went through PTSD and anxiety. I know what I'm talking about. God used me to minister to them. He gave me a promise, and he's given this promise to you too. What you do for others, he will do for you. And that's what he ministered to me. I said, God, my life is so jacked up. I'm in an, a marriage of domestic violence. I said, God, I'm, I'm going through myself, but yet you called me here to be a light and, and, and a witness to your people. He said, you're just perfect. The reason why you are perfect is because you understand everything that they're going through when they call you. Every wow. call I get is a humbling experience. Every call I get is a wake-up call, and it's a dose of reality. And, and I thank God for the opportunity. And, and even in my life right now, I thank God because the last seven months I've been separated. And I thank God because he has been there for me to help me. God has brought me, he's brought me to a better mental health. My, my spiritual life has gotten stronger. He's provided for me daily. My family and I, my children and I, we haven't had to lack or want for anything. He's given us a strong support system and a family in Christ that have been there for us every step of the way, brothers and sisters, and, and, and my family. I'm so grateful to God. I say all of this to, you, to all who's listening tonight is that when you trust God with your whole heart, 
It's not about you trying to figure out the next step. It's not about you trying to know what the next move is. God already got that. There's, he'll reveal bits and pieces of the plan and the purpose for your life. But one thing is true. There's sometimes where God will just say, trust and obey me, and that's it. You know, a, a lot of times we look for God to, 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 to show us the steps, but he wants us to trust him first, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and I thank God. See, that, that's what it was with Peter. I mean, he allowed Peter to supernaturally walk on water and defy the law of gravity, right? Mm-hmm. He wants us to get to the place where we're walking by faith in that, in that power of faith. And even we'll see supernatural things happen. God gives us the power to do exploits. I believe it's in Daniel chapter 11 where, God, where the, the writer says that uh, God's people will know him and they will do exploits. And that's what it's meant for us. So, yes, I give you the word of restoration tonight. So it doesn't matter how badly those locusts, those palm worms and caterpillars and all that have eaten, they have not stolen your destiny. When you serve God, your destiny is fulfilled in him. And there's no devil, there's no demon in hell that can stop it. Now, when, when, now, when we've gotten to the place where we've cried our tears till we are dry heaving and can't cry no more, when we've gotten to the place where we've been seeming like we've been out of our mind and we've just been depleted, and overwhelmed, but we've got to allow the Lord, we've got to allow him and open our hearts to him so that he can fill us back up. I've been down at my lowest point. Like I said, I, God uh, blessed me to minister to the, to, the, to the weak and to the destitute and to the sick and the hurting and the lost and the suicidal because th- that, th- those people were me. And I'm 40 years old today, celebrated my 40th birthday this year. And I thank God because I know I wasn't supposed to be here. The enemy had been trying to take me out since my mother carried me in her womb. God spared her life and my life. My mother had preeclampsia when she carried me. And it hit her in the seventh month she carried me. And, and, and we both almost didn't make it, but we are here. And there were times that, yes, I almost, you know, lost my life, whether it was by circumstances that I know it was the devil or whether it was all by my own fruition, my own bad decisions, but yet God still loved me through it and he still spared me. Some of you might have think that God gave up on you. Some of you think that God, hmm, he's forgotten me. God, he's angry with me. I've messed up too bad. Every one of those things are lies from the enemy. The Bible says that God is patient. The Bible says that God is slow to anger. And he tells us in Psalm 51 and verse 7 that the person that God that, that, that comes to God with a broken and a contrite heart, he will not turn them away. Any, God, any person that comes repenting, God will not turn away because he knows that we need him. And we've got to realize right. that we need him every day. And when we realize that we need him too, God knows your life will change when you open it up to God. Your life mm. will be made new when you trust God with your life. If, he, if, if we can trust God with eternity, why can't we trust him with our own life? We're talking right. about the God by speaking words created an entire universe. Every star has a name. Every creature above and below ground has a name. He knows the count of the number of hairs on your head. We're talking about the God who every over 7 billion people that live on this planet and not one of us have the same fingerprint. Huh? That's the mm. God we serve? So what makes you think your problems are too much for him? His word in Jeremiah right. says that he said, I'm the God of all mankind. Is there anything too hard for me? See, I love when God asks us challenging questions because he wants our faith to match up with what he's asking you because God already has created. Matter of fact, the book on our lives has already been written. It says that in Psalm 139. God has already put your name in his book. And he's already written out your story from beginning to end. So why do you think that God wrote your story that you lost the battle and you were defeated? No, not to those who trust in God. God already has a successful end, according to Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. He's got a successful end to everybody's story. It's up to us to seek God and find out what his, what his purpose is for us and walk in that. It's up to us to do that. We can't expect for God to do all the work. He's already done all his work on his end. We have to join in with our faith. We have to join in in our obedience, you know. And you know what I love about God so much is that through my messiest times of life, he never stopped loving me. And I Mm. say to you all tonight, he never stopped loving you. God never took his hand off of me. When I was so far from him, 
God never took his hand off me. He never turned his back on me. He never stopped pursuing me. God brought me from out of a wretched life as a sinner to someone who has knows her purpose now, who's walking and living to fulfill it each day, teaching and have raised up my daughter to do the same. Indeed. And so this is so, so everything that I share with you tonight has been in a, my entire 40 years of experience and my walk with God since my youth, you know, and I thank the Lord. He didn't let me die. He let me live. And not only just live, but to live in him, to live in his plan and his will for my life, to live in his abundance. And it just gets, and, 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 and I know, and everything that I shared with you, trust me, it is not a cakewalk. You've got to definitely stand as the soldier he made you to be in Christ, wearing the whole armor of God. It's not a cakewalk serving God. But it sure is a glorious one. It's an adventure. You're going to come. I'm not going to lie because the Bible is clear. You are going to come and get some tests and trials. You are going to come and get some demonic uh, activities of the enemy. You are. But God has given you every weapon of warfare to fight. He has given you everything you need. He's already saying, matter of fact, it's just like the word says in Colossians 2, he's already disarmed the powers and the authorities of the devil. He triumphs him over at the cross. So this stuff that's going on in the world today that you see in other people's life and in other countries and nations, stuff's going on in your, your life. Trust and believe you me. You've got, to get, you've got to get in tune in the presence of God. Like the tribe of Issachar in Israel, the, 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 the one of the 12 tribes, make us a people that understand the signs of the time. You've got to know what's going on in your world. You've got to know what's going on in your environment, in your life. No, don't be ig- Paul said in 2 Corinthians, don't be ignorant. Satan's devices, hmm. you know. So, so, so I thank the Lord that for me, it's it's just that He's opened my eyes to so much, and that is because I, for Him, opened my heart to allow Him in. If we don't allow Him in, you can't perceive any of these things that I'm saying to you. You can't receive any of it. You have to open your heart to the Lord in order to receive that. See. A father shares his most intimate secrets and information with his sons and daughters that he has the most closest and intimate relationship with. You know what I'm saying? My children can come to me, and I can share so many great uh, golden jewels and nuggets with them, but I might not can do that for somebody else's child that lives across town. Why? Because I don't know them like that. It takes it takes for us to know him. Like Paul said in, in, I think it's in Philippians, I count all things but loss, but to know God and to know of his excellency and of his power. You've got to, to know him. you got a desire to know him. And I know the enemy fights us with that. I know the enemy fights us in our flesh. He distracts us and he tries to tug at our, our lusts and our desires. The enemy is very deceptive. He's slick. He's going to come at the things that he knows you desire most, the, the areas that he knows you're weak at. But I mm-hmm. but trust you me. Trust you me. Take on the whole armor of God that you stand against every trick and scheme of the devil. I'm telling you now. So, yes, so when I say restoration, restoration comes with knowledge. <laughs> restoration <laughs> comes with knowledge. It comes, it, you, you need, if you want to be restored, you have to have the knowledge of God's word. You have to have his empowerment of his spirit to walk in each and every day. That is how you receive restoration, you know? And when I was, and when the book, uh, the prophet was talking about those locusts and all those other worms earlier, you know, the reason why he, he, the writer, I believe the prophet gave all of those creatures is because they also represent some things that happen generationally too. And this is something that I want to say to somebody tonight, and I pray you receive it because when sin goes lingering too long in your life, it becomes recursive. It repeats itself. It replicates itself. This is how we get generational curses that happen. Mm. And you wonder why you're struggling with stuff in your present day because you've got to go back down your line of your bloodline and family, and, and you have to start breaking and taking authority and renouncing those ancestral spirits from your forefathers that sin too. And that stuff, and the devil, when he plants a seed, he don't just come back for it right away. He'll say, I'll check, I'll check back in about 15, 20 years. I'll come back in 100 years. Because the enemy, sooner or later, is going to come back for his stuff. And so, so yeah, 
that path of destruction of, of all of those things that Joel was talking about, do they come like an army? And so that's what we have to do. We have to we have to nip that stuff in the bud right where it is. Your generation does not have to fight the same battles that you fought or that your mother and father fought or your grandmamas and your aunties and them fought before you. We say today, no. What is the word, the topic of this message? Restoration. Well, how do we get restoration? Knowledge. We've got to get knowledge of the word of God. We've got to get knowledge of our lives, our families, and the stuff that's been happening there. We've got to get knowledge of how to go to battle in the spirit realm. Because don't you know everything that manifests itself in the earthly realm, it begins in the spirit realm first? So if you don't, if you don't, if you don't, uh, uh, if you do not cast it down there first, why do you think it's going to keep showing up in the natural? Because the laws of the spirit realm govern the earth. There's principalities that the, the apostle talks about. There's dark forces of evil and spiritual wickedness in high places. A lot of people fighting battles, like we were talking about suicide and sickness and debt and poverty and all that stuff. That stuff is not natural. That stuff is of the spirit. <laughs> that stuff started there in that realm, and, and, you, and it manifests in the natural. So if, you, so if we don't come to the root of the problem, that's why that stuff is going to keep showing up. So with knowledge, we must come to repentance first. And then we must make a decision to take our life and let's say, okay, for God, these things I renounce from my life. And I call down the, uh, for this spirit of poverty. I call down the spirit of infirmity. I rebuke and take authority against this spirit of adultery and, and all of this stuff that is, I've been seeing in my life, all of this in the name of Jesus. We've got to really start getting aggressive of how we apply the word and how we pray and fast. Seriously, I'm telling you right now, we're living in a time now, y'all see the wickedness is going on in this world. And we don't have time to be, we don't have time for fluff. We, we, we need to be aggressive as the believers in Christ. We need to be girded up and prepared. We need to be armed because the enemy is scared of us. The enemy knows the power we possess. We possess the kingdom of God inside of us. And he knows, like Genesis 1-8 is one of my favorite scriptures. It is because it's the covenant that God made with all mankind. He didn't just make it with Adam and Eve right there, but God, but that, that, that verse that he uh, spoke to them, it was for all mankind. And he said, God says there, and God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over every living creature that moves on the earth. Now, you see what he said there. We are fruitful and we multiply. So that means we bear seed in an order. And so when we get seed, now we multiply that seed. So you have to do both. And I like when he said replenish the earth. And then he said subdue. We already know subdue means to, means to bind. It means to, it means to take control over. Now, why would we need to bind anything up? Or why would we need to take control over anything, right, unless there's an enemy, unless there's an adversary? So that's so God gave us subduing power, too. We gotta catch this, and so, and dominion. God gave us dominion. So God gave us this uh, dominion, meaning that dominant authority to rule over the earth. You know, and so, and so the enemy knows this. Why do you think he fights us the way he does to keep us from knowing the rights that we have in the kingdom and the possessions that our God has given us? That's why the enemy is like he is. That's why he fights us like he fights us. If he could keep us spiritually blind, hmm, he can have a family for generations and generations just lost in the sauce. But I say no, no, that ought not to be so for us and not to be so for the people of God. We are the ones that the Lord has sent to set captives free. Jesus said it himself. When we know the truth, the truth will set you free. Hmm. Amen. And so, so yes, knowledge and truth, you need that. Obedience, repentance, you need that in order for it to really live the restoration that Christ has made for us. Your yesterdays may have been. Your current situation, what you're living in, may be. However, there's the comma. The day you get this, what the word of God is showing us, what I've been expounding on tonight, you get this. 
and see if your life doesn't change because our God does not lie. He does not go back on his word. In Deuteronomy, it tells you uh, very much there that when you obey the commands of God, he tells you when you obey and follow those instructions, you will not limp or stumble and you will live prosperous lives. You'll live long and prosperous. This, these, are, these are the promises of God, but they are only come true for those who walk in obedience. Right. You know? Yeah. So I, so I just, I give all of this tonight just to share with all that was listening. I pray, I pray, I really do, that it encouraged someone, even if it was just one person that, that was touched tonight. You know, that satisfies my soul right there. Because you know what? I just want to leave you with this. God loves you so much more than what your mind and heart could even ever fathom. He created a whole universe for you to live in and I to live in. He created a plan for your life that's so that's so unfathomable. But I tell you this, if you trust him, when you love him, if you trust him with your life, you can't fight these battles by yourself, what you're going through. You can't. You need him. And he has given you everything you need for this journey. He wants you to be able to trust him and not be afraid and take his hand and walk with him because he is with you. Christ died for this and rose so that we could have new life. The greatest example of his love, he gave his life and he rose again. Now, you, now I'm telling you something. He don't have to convince me that he loved me. He gave his life for me. And he gave his life for you. You know, right. no one else is going to lay their life down for you like that. Like, not, not like your Jesus and mine. You know, and so, so yes, I, I just wanted to say of that tonight. I know I gave, I expounded on a lot, but I just wanted to let you all know restoration is the will and the plan of God. And it is given to all of those who seek the presence and the faith of God for it. And if I could just uh, uh, say a prayer over the airwaves tonight, over the people that are listening, to all of us that are listening. Father, I just want to thank you, God, for this time. I want to thank you for this moment. Thank you, Lord God, for your word that came forth, oh God. I am just, I am your vessel. Your word says when I open my mouth, you'll fill it. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking. And I pray that the word has touched and pierced and permeated the hearts of the listeners, because I know it did for mine. Father, I do pray of an awesome kingdom kind of restoration to those out there that are sick, or maybe whether it's not, even, even if it's not them directly, but it's someone they know. I pray for those lost. I pray for those that are hurting. I pray for those destitute, for those that are going through in their marriages, for those that are going through with their children, for those that may be going through in their health, on the job, Lord God, joblessness. Lord God, no matter what the situation, let them know that you are the God who is Lord of all. Let them know that you are the God that is their ever-present help in trouble. Let them know that, Lord God, that you are the one to bring them out into a new time and a new era and a new beginning for those that would come to you to see restoration, for the, draw, compel them, Holy Spirit, to seek your faith, to seek your presence, compel them to come forward to you, O oh God, and surrender their all. Give them a surrendering spirit. Give them a spirit of obedience, O oh God. Give them a spirit mm, of trust in you. Lord God, and yes, I pray, yes, replenishment, and I pray that some, it may be some 30, some 60, some 100 fold, they're going to see that. And I say that the word will not fall to the ground, the seed will not be devoured, but the seed will take root of which they've heard of the word tonight. It will take root in them, and their seeds will grow, and they will bear great fruit, Lord God. There is deliverance in your word. There is power in your word and in your name. I pray every yoke of destruction coming down in the name of Jesus. No more bound, loose, and free those that are bound. The anointing that destroys the yoke and lifts the heavy burden of the enemy from them, as Isaiah's word says. I speak that over the, for the viewers tonight, the listeners tonight. Lord God, those that are dealing with addictions, I hear the Holy Spirit say, be free from that spirit of pharmacia broke off of them in the name of Jesus Christ. I say, Lord God, those that are battling and wrestling with that, they shall be sober minded and have no more desire. And you will sever off, Lord God, their hangouts, their other, their other dealers and Lord God, other addicts, Lord God, you will set free every captive in Jesus name. I hear mothers, mothers crying over their children, 
Lord God, you will redeem the seed of the righteous. Your word promises that. Yes, you promise in Acts 16.31, when we believe on the Lord Jesus, we'll be saved and along with our entire household. I speak to families. Like Joshua said, our household will serve the Lord. Lord God, I thank you. And Lord God, we pray for your empowerment, Holy Spirit, to go forward and be taught and equipped in you and in your word and go forward and advance your kingdom here. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Man, hey, listeners, she preached on tonight. She preached on tonight. Um, Crystal, you were saying you had mentioned about serving God is not a cakewalk. I I think that Mm -hmm. a lot of people feel like that now that I'm living my life for Christ, that my life's Mm -hmm. supposed to be easy, that they're not supposed Mm -hmm. to go through. But sometimes people only got to understand that there's a there's a a word called preparation. That sometimes you have to go through some things in order to be prepared Mm -hmm. for where God is taking you. So Mm -hmm. it's not always going to be a cakewalk. Sometimes you just got to go through. And and sometimes when you go through things, it doesn't mean it's going to be a day or two. Sometimes you might have to go through things for months. But Mm -hmm. just know that God is still, and it will always be the one that you need. He's still the guy. He's King of King, he's still he's still able to bring you through. And if you keep trusting yeah. and keep believing, he will bring you mm. through. And then you he was will. talking about um, God. You said that God has not forgot about us, and you you touch mm. on that He's never stopped loving us. And then you touched mm. on the promise is too big and too small. See, mm. the last couple months. My yeah. family been going through some things. It just seemed like yeah. the last couple of months, every time I turned around, my, my mother or even my grandmother was in the hospital. And it's yeah. like we just can't ever catch a break. And I remember a couple of weeks ago, it was on a Saturday, I went down to my grandmother's house. And my grandmother was in so much pain, tears were coming down her mm-hmm. eyes. And I looked Ooh, at my, my grandmother and I had to step back because it looked like my grandmother was fading away. But see, mm. my grandmother taught me something a long time ago. She taught me something mm. about that man named Jesus. And if you keep, mm. going, keep trusting in him, no matter what the situation is, he will be, he will bring you out. And my grandmother is a firm believer. She knows that whatever yeah. the doctor was telling her, she knows that God mm-hmm. had the final say so. And, and what, yeah. you know, God put the doctors here for a reason. And and I, and I believe the doctor is doing what they're supposed to be doing, but I'm not believing yeah. in everything that the doctor is saying because I have to believe in a higher power. Hey. I have to believe Come in on. that man named Jesus because he has to find a say so. And it, my yeah. grandmother, my grandmother may never walk again. I don't know. I can tell you that she's still walking right now, and she might be yeah. moving slower than what she used to, and she might can't get around like she want to. But she's still able to move somewhat. Hey, yes. I, I just want to touch on that because he ain't never stopped mm. loving us. Because there was time oh when God. I knew I didn't deserve yes. God at all. Yes. Yes. And, and it's, it was times where I felt like God had his hand on me because I, I should have been <laughs> dead and gone. Mm hmm. Even then, when I felt like he had his hand on me, I, I still wasn't ready to walk that walk with him. I still had to yeah. go through some more things because I tell people all the time that you, you shouldn't have to go through things that you go through if yes. you just let God have his way. Amen. Sometimes we want to be the boss. We want to run the show, mm. and, and that's not <laughs> what God wants. So then we got to step back and, and let God have his way and if we had done that from the beginning, things would have worked out that. differently. And see, I, I, mm-hmm. I, I'm not just talking to you all that's listening. I'm talking to myself, too. Because there have been some times yeah. where I, I just wanted to take over. And then, yeah. then that wasn't the route that God wanted. And I had to step back and be like, okay, I'm going to let you take over. And then God started moving things, and things started moving, and things got better. Mm. But if I had kept yeah. doing it, there's no telling where we would have ended up at. And I yeah. don't care go through 
I don't care what it is. I don't care how big or how small because there's somebody that went to the doctor mm. and the doctor yeah. gave them some bad news. There's somebody yeah. landing the bed right now, Crystal, that God, that the doctors already done gave up on them. There's somebody yeah. right yeah. now in the dark, don't have anything to eat, don't have a mm. family member call, call them to come check on them. There's somebody right now that just lost their job. There's My somebody God. right now that's fighting sickness after sickness. There's somebody mm-hmm. right now that child can't get right, or they feel like my child oh. just went through right. But I'm here to mm-hmm. tell you about a man named Jesus. Jesus. I don't care how big the problem may be. I don't care how small the problem may seem to you. If you just mm-hmm. give it to God and My let God. it go, don't worry about it. My Lord. Just give it to him. Yes. And let him run the show. Mm, trust, mm, trust me, yeah. things will be trust. different. It's going yeah. to be different. It's mm-hmm. going to be different. Ah oh, man, hey, I'm, I'm gonna let that go because I'm yeah. starting to feel yeah. that. Cause hey, you preaching tonight though? I'm okay. <laughs> starting to feel that. Yes. Hey, I'm yes. starting to feel that. Hey, we we got to go through things to be yes. prepared yes. for where he is yes. taking us. My God. Yes. Yes. And that is so true, too, because, you know, the word of God even teaches us that in life we will have troubles. And, you know, and, and I just want to just even just real quick, just and just shed a little light on that, too, because we can't we can't live our lives just believing that, you know, we won't ever go through things, you know. And then for some people, they feel like, problems is all they've ever seen or have ever known, you know, and it's like they've never really known what it was like to have peace. It seems like things have been dysfunctional from them since the beginning, even from their childhood. And I just want to speak to anybody that's dealing with that area right now. I just feel the unction of the Holy Spirit right now to really just delve into that. I want to say to you, definitely Seek the face of God because, like it says in uh, Psalm in the 16th chapter, that in God's presence is a fullness of joy, and at His right hand there for pleasures forevermore. See, we 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 understand the enemy is real, and He is the force that works against us. But since we know the God named Jesus, we know that we have power over every work of His too, you know. And and, and He is known as Jehovah Shalom. He is known as the God of your peace. He is known, like Isaiah said, the prophesied the Prince of Peace. Amen. And so, so seeking peace and pursuing it, the Bible teaches us to do that. See, we have to be aggressive when it comes to fighting for uh, what God has given us. I remember when I was going through my most severe season of depression, which was back in 2017, my mental health battles were at the worst, at the very peak at the, on that year than they had ever been. And, yes, Christians do suffer with mental health. Don't let nobody fool you. You know, we do. We go through battles, too, because we still are human. And, you know, and so we are, we're, the, the flesh and the spirit are always wrestling against each other, like Paul said in Romans 8. And so the thing is, I remember the Holy Spirit, he spoke, and he said, fight for your life. And I told God, I said, God, but how? I have no fight left in me. And he said, the fight that you're talking about is not the fight that I'm talking about. And then that's when he began to show me. Because I got to the point, because, you know, like I say, one of the things that uh, I do in leadership in my church is I'm a worship leader and I do sing. And when I got to the point where I felt like I couldn't even sing, I got to the point where I felt like I couldn't pray or I got, or I couldn't even crack open a Bible. I would be in the bed. And I would just be like, had no strength, no energy, no nothing. It's like I couldn't even do anything. I was paralyzed. <laughs> and, and, and God reminded me. He said, when I say fight, I meant you fight in, in me, in the spirit. You don't fight in the natural. I am the one who will rescue you by my righteous right hand. So, yes, yeah, the Lord, he kept me from my mind snapping. When I, when I was trying to contemplate ways of taking my own life, he renewed my mind. He kept me. He snatched me from the fire. He really did. And I hmm. say that to somebody tonight because that's how you've been feeling. 
You've been feeling like there's no hope. You've been feeling like it is all over with. And God is saying no. He's saying fight, but I'm going to teach you the, the biblical. I'm going to teach you my strategy of how you fight. So he did that for me. He did that for me. He said the tears you cry, your, I interpret them as prayers. He told, he told me that. He said, Crystal, your tears are even prayers. And then he took me back to Romans 8 when, and, and 28 and all of those verses that are in that section where he's saying how the spirit, his spirit makes intersection for us. There's times when we have those groanings and those and which we can't even utter. There's times when we don't even know how to pray like we should. The Bible says right there that he says the my spirit intercedes. And that's what God did. So we got to understand something. We get to the point where we are just that helpless. The Lord is interceding on our behalf. He is unto the Father praying on our behalf. So God is strengthening us and God is rescuing us right when in our in our moment of need, even when we don't even realize he's doing it. And he is because a, a, a parent knows the different cries of their children. Like you have a child, a baby, whatever. You know a hungry cry. You know a sleepy cry. You know a cry when they're sick. You know a cry when they just want attention because that's just that's instinct. The God that we serve, he understands the cries of his children. He knows the different types of woes we go through. And so so when I was crying out to him, he knew exactly what was wrong. Even there were days I couldn't even, couldn't even put it into words what was going on with me. My mind wasn't right. I was out of it. But he knew. And he healed. And he delivered. And he kept me. And I, I, get, I get emotional just thinking about I'm about to cry. But he kept me, and he rescued me, and he'll do that for anybody that calls out to him. He's a rescuer. He's a present help. And so, yes, receive that somebody tonight in Jesus' name. Cry out to him. He's a rescuing God. He loves you. He will not let you fall. Like Job said, he did not allow me to go down to the pit or my soul to the grave. He won't do that with you. Cry out to him. Don't just wallow. In what you're in, cry out to God, and won't he draw you out of where you're at? I'm, I am living proof. I am living proof of it. I should have been dead a long time ago, whether it was from natural causes or whether it was at my own hands, because trust me, I've lived through a lot. But I stand here as God has brought me from out of all that. And, I, and, and I've made a decision. I'm going to walk with you, God, because... Because what you've done for me, huh, yeah, I, there's no doubt. In, there's no doubt. He's real. He's everything he says he is and more. He is everything he says he is. <laughs> Crystal, Crystal, I want to say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you yes. for that wonderful word on tonight. Um, you was asking my first female that I had on, and you... You rock the mm. house tonight. <laughs> hey, everybody out there, um, I hope you got the word on tonight. I hope you let that word minister to your heart, your mind, and your soul. Take heed to what was said and stay focused on God. And then, Crystal, I'm going to close this out. It's my favorite saying that I've been saying for a long time. And right. everybody out there listening, if you just do me one favor, I want you to raise your hand as high as you can get it. And once you get it as high as you can get it, if you could just ball your fist. See, all this, when you ball your fist, you just grab on to God's unchanging hand. And whatever it mm. is that through. If you just keep your hand in God's mm-hmm. hand, everything will be all right. And Crystal, mm-hmm. if you have anything else to say, I'm going to close it on out with the song by Tant called He's Amen. Been Good. Amen. Well, I just want to thank you, first of all, brother, for having me. I thank you. I'm just, I feel humbled and honored just to have been able to come on tonight on the show and share. And 
I just feel like uh, I, I've embraced, you know, uh, an extension, a new family. You know, the people who have, you know, joined in with us tonight, I don't see your faces, but I love you with the love of Christ Jesus, and I speak his blessings over you all tonight, indeed, and, be, and I surely will be praying for you all. God bless you, and I love you. Good night. There you heard it. Crystal from out of Virginia. You all have a good night. God bless you all. 